Hi everyone, thanks for tuning in. Hope you're all doing well wherever you are, whatever you're up to. This is part two of my recent make, which is the Green Line Patterns Cascade Duffel Coat. So if you missed part one, then just check out that video first because then this one will make a bit more sense. But today I wanted to show you my finished coat and then I also wanted to just chat to you about my experience of sort of some of the finishes that are on it and just, yeah, bringing the coat together and then what it looks like all finished as well. So last week in my video, I mentioned that I would chat to you about the toggles in more detail because I decided to make my own toggles for this coat but you don't have to do that it is quite an involved process and I personally found it's a bit of trial and error but what you can do is buy some ready-made toggles and I've got some here so they come in packs of just one toggle so you know depending on what the pattern calls for in this case it's three toggles that the, the cascade ask for you just need to get three of these so they come with two little loops one of them's got the toggle button on it and then you can see that there's these holes in the, the sort of little patches that are at the side so I would recommend just hand sewing them on it I ended up hand sewing the toggles that I made I hand sewed them on I think you just get a bit more control and it's a little bit neater so this is definitely the easier option having the ready-made toggles um, but if you want to do your own made toggles then then you need to get um, some leather and then you also need to get the toggle button as well so I had some leather um, in my stash from some other projects that I've been working on and at first I thought I was going to use this sort of muted pink colour which has got little punched gold, gold holes in it but I just I don't know I just wasn't sure about the contrast I liked it but I just didn't know if I wanted them to I don't know, I just wasn't sure about the pink. So I went back to the leather place. There's this amazing leather place that is really nearby um, where we are in Birmingham. It's in Redditch and it's called Manorside Fabrics, but it's kind of like a branch of Misan Fabrics, which some of you um, who've been fabric shopping in London will probably know Misan. Um, so this is that same company, but this bit's called Manorside Fabrics. Anyway, it's like a warehouse and it's absolutely packed full of loads of amazing leather. Um, and really luckily, it's just like a 20 minute drive from the shop. So I went back there and looked through all of their leather again and I ended up getting this leather here which is the same as my pink one but it's just a sort of grey colour. Um, so I just thought I wanted to sort of keep everything a bit more muted and keep the colour palette a bit, um, yeah, a bit, I guess, a bit more not neutral. Um, so it's got these little punched holes in it as well with sort of a goldy kind of metallic finish on it. So I had a little practice with various off cuts just to, to try and get used to working with the leather and putting it together with the fabric. So with the pattern comes a template to cut, to cut out the shape, that sort of um, semi-circle shape, but you could do a triangular one as well, you could make up your own shape. So I tried it with the semi-circular one first and I tried just sewing it on the machine with normal thread, but I just didn't feel like that looked very good. Then I tried sewing it on the machine with top stitching thread but it was just really skipping stitches a lot and it just tried various needles and all sorts, I just couldn't get it to work. Um, so then in the end I decided that I would hand sew it on and what I did was I punched, pre-punched holes in it using these pliers here which are actually the pliers that <laughs> you use to make the trainers um, which is kind of another thing. So on the side to this I've been making my own trainers using these sneaker kits and um, yeah they have these punch pliers that come from making the trainers because you have to punch holes in the leather and punch holes in the sole and they have a really fine um, 1.5 millimeter hole punch on them because by normal hole punch the smallest is two millimeters so I use the 1.5 hole punch to punch holes in the semicircle, and then I also did the same with the strip of leather so the bit that was going to be the loop as well so I punched cut out a strip punched holes in both sides of it and then using top stitching thread I just hand stitched that and um, with a running stitch and then when I top stitched my little half circle semicircle onto the coat I just caught the my little loop within that so you have to put these toggles on I would recommend really doing it before you do anything else with the front bodice so you have to make the front bodice and put the pockets on and then also insert the zip as well because it's a hidden zipper and that sort of affects where the overlap is. But at that point in time, you'll have only just really basted the little sort of facing bit of the zip in. But what I would recommend doing is basting it at the actual seam allowance, just so that you can get more of an idea of what the overlap on the coat is actually gonna be like once the, you know, it's, the coat's totally finished and then the, 
the toggles are serving their function. So it was like a bit of messing around to try and get the tension right in the toggles. And yeah, I just had, I had to hand sew it on and it took quite a long time. And I'm pleased with it now, but it's one of those slightly frustrating moments in a project where you're like, I just want to get this done. And then it just takes longer than you think. But yeah, I'm, I'm pleased that I did it, but don't, don't go into that lightheartedly it's quite full on making your own toggles it's much much easier to get your own ones and um, so that is my story with the toggles I told you it was kind of long and um, so the next thing that I wanted to talk to you about was the hood so I'm not entirely sure if I've missed something with the instructions I did try to go back and sort of read through it but the hood has got a facing but when you cut out the lining for the hood it just tells you to use the same pattern pieces that you use for the main fabric so your hood, your lining of your hood will end up too big. Oh, well, that's what happened with me anyway. So then I had to work out how to, like, I had to cut a strip off my lining fabric for my hood basically so that it wasn't too big because the facing obviously takes up some of that distance. Um, so just watch out for that when you come to make the hood, you're gonna have to just adjust the pattern pieces a little bit, um, the pattern pieces of the lining of the hood so that they're smaller, so that it accommodates for the facing. Hopefully that makes sense. Um, so yeah, that's the story with the hood, but I really, really like the hoods and it feels so cozy in this fabric. Remember the fabric that I'm using is this amazing wool cashmere fabric and it is so thick, it's like double faced, so it's really sturdy and it's really warm. Um, I chat more about the fabric in my first video, so you can check that out if you've not seen it yet. But yeah, I really love the hoods. It's really lovely and snuggly and I know it'll keep me warm when it's really cold outside. Um, so yeah, that's my hood. And then the next thing that I wanted to show you and talk to you about is bagging out the lining because this part of coat making all sort of baffles me and I know that other people might get a little bit confused with it as well. Because basically what you have is like you, you're the sort of shell of your coat, or the outer of your coat, and then you have your lining as well. And then you end up sewing the two of them together um, where they sort of meet on the inside. So like on the edge of the facing bit of the coat and um, on the cascade you can see it's got this facing bit at the back as well so you sew it all on there and then you have to um, no you don't turn it inside out yet so you sew all of that and then you have to sew the sleeves together and that's kind of the weirdest bit because you you thinking to yourself how can this possibly work like surely when I turn this inside out it's just going to be a big ball and all sort of knotted out but it does totally works so you have to just take your sleeves and you sort of fold back um, usually it's easier to fold back the lining because it's a bit thinner and um, fold back the lining bit of the sleeve and insert it into the the outer fabric so that it's right sides together and sew that round and then the space that you leave is usually in the sleeve so in the cascade it does tell you to leave a hole in the seam of the sleeve and other coats that I've made sometimes it tells you to leave it there or sometimes it tells you to leave it in the side seam but I knew that with this coat the fabric was just too thick and bulky there was going to be no hope on earth that I was going to be able to turn it inside out through a space in the sleeve so I ended up having to just leave a space in the side seam just so I would have a bit more flexibility when I was turning it inside out so I've made a little video of just me turn the process of turning it inside out so I've like laid it all out when it's all sewn together and the only space is in the lining and then yeah you just have to slowly sort of turn it inside out and eventually it does start to resemble a coat um, and then after I'd done that I then just had to sew that space closed in the lining and then the pressing commenced you just have to there's a lot of press involved in this coat especially because it's got a facing at the bottom as well so the bottom hem has got a facing the sleeves have got a facing um, and because the fab my fabric that I was using was quite thick it just needed really pressed into submission and I needed to use my trusty clapper um, to, to squish it down and get it to sit flat um, but yeah that was the sort of last part of finishing the coat so here is my coat totally finished I really love the length I think it's a really nice length for keeping warm there's no chance any drafts are going to be drafting up there and then the hidden zipper and then that fold over bit with the toggles as well just means that it's going to be really snuggly from the front too there's no breeze can get in at the front so if you live in a windy place then this might be the coat for you and um, the pockets are really great as well they're lovely and big and even when I've got gloves on my hands can still fit in nicely so I always appreciate nice and um, big deep pockets that are going to help me to keep warm as well and yeah I'm just just overall really chuffed with this coat I think it's going to keep me really warm I don't know if I've ever been this organized before in making a coat it's still not quite cold enough to wear it yet here in Birmingham but yeah bring on the cold weather so that I can crack out that 
that difficult. So I hope you've found my little review of this pattern useful and that it might inspire you to have a go and maybe make your own quote this winter. Like I said in my first video and then if you missed my video two videos ago I sort of summarised lots of different quote pattern options. Making a quote doesn't have to be as complicated as you would think. I know it can seem overwhelming, but if you choose a fabric that's not too thick, the one I chose was quite thick, so maybe if it's your first coat, don't pick that fabric. Um, but if you choose a fabric that's a bit lighter in weight and you choose a really simple design, then actually it's totally achievable to make a coat and you will reap the rewards because you get to wear it all the time. It's not like a dress or a top that you just, you know, you're maybe going to wear once or twice a week. You get to wear the coat that you make all the time, which I think is just really exciting and really worthwhile. If you want to check out the blog post that goes with this video just click on the link that is in the description below but thanks so much for watching guys. If you haven't subscribed already just remember to hit subscribe so you don't miss out on the next video and I'll see you next time. Thanks, bye!